Hey, welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. My name's Larry. This mahogany footboard's our project for today. Looks pretty good, except for this part. Let's get it fixed. And I brought you in real close to take a look here. And you can see the grains of the wood. What you want to make sure that you do before you start to fit this together is take a pick or another tool and make sure that you pick up any broken shards of wood that would block the pieces from coming together. Sometimes a piece will collapse in, you need to push it back. Sometimes you need to grab a pair of tweezers and pull it right out. So I'm going to get this piece prepared and the base of the cannonball prepared and then we'll glue these together, we'll line them up perfectly, clamp them, and let them set overnight. And here's an example of a little something that could give you trouble. You can see I've got you in as absolutely as close as I can, but as I'm checking, maybe you can see that, I'll put it up against there. There's a little piece of dust or spider web. We don't need that in our glue up. We'll get rid of that. There's some more right there that we don't want. There we go. Okay, it's looking good. We got this one little bit I'll pull out here. We'll get this ready to glue up. We've got both sides cleaned up, ready to go. I'm using Tight Bond 2, just a regular PVA carpenter's glue. And we're not going to be shy about it. We want it. really down in there. We've got that pulled back just about as tight as you're going to get it and plenty of uh, clamp pressure straight down on this to make sure that this sets up nice. So we're going to leave this overnight, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll continue this repair. We're at the point in the project where we got to make some decisions about what's next. Let me bring you in then we'll talk about it. Okay, you're looking down at the back side of this crack and what you see here are places where the wood, parts of the wood have, they basically exploded away when this thing was, uh, was fractured. And then the fracture comes right up to the edge of the ball and around. Lots of times when you glue a jagged fracture back, if you have enough contact area, that glue job will do, the, will do what you need and that's all. And also, depends on what the purpose of the piece of furniture is. Now if this was a turning on, let's say, a, a shelf unit in Etage or whatever, we would probably just take some wax, fill in this missing wood here, uh, put a little color on it, and be done. But this is a footboard of a bed, and it's a single bed, which is probably means it's going to be for a child. And if anybody's had toddlers, you know how they like to climb. And if a little one grabbed this and put all his or her weight and pulled and this let go and they fell and got hurt I couldn't live with myself so my decision is going to be that I'm going to cut the ball off right here and run a dowel through the fracture so we'll have a dowel maybe an inch and a half into the good wood and maybe an inch and a half into here and that dowel will support this entire repair we're basically putting good wood on either side of this fracture either side of this break now you may ask yourself, well, why didn't you just drill a dowel at the beginning? And the reason being, with all this jagged wood, we'd have never got a straight drill hole. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to very carefully cut this ball off at this joint right here so it'll conceal the repair when we put it back on. And then we are going to very carefully lay out the center of this portion of the turning and then drill a 3 8 inch hole through it. Now the reason I came up with 3 8 inch is because this is at its narrowest 
about eight tenths of an inch and then three quarters is 0.75 so we're going to go with three quarters half of that is three eighths so we're going to drill drill a three eighths hole through there and we'll drill a three eighths hole through here we'll use put a dowel in here the dowel will be glued in here we'll mark for this and and then i think we'll be uh, we'll have the kind of repair that we're happy with so the next step is believe it or not to cut this ball off here we go i'm going to use a very narrow bladed pull saw I'll get it right in that seam and we're going to start to mark our way around. And what I'll do is I'll follow this all the way around rather than try to cut through it so I'm more certain that I'm going to have the circumference properly cut out. There we go, it's off. The next step is to find the center of this dowel. And we do that using this tool here. And basically what it does is it rests on the outside curves of the circle and gives you a perpendicular line here. And I guess what, the perpendicular line of intersecting, I don't know, cords, leads, I don't know some geometry thing that I've forgotten since I was a kid but anyhow this goes on here you trace this line here trace a line here trace a line here and where those lines intersect should be the center of this dowel now this this is not perfectly round and that causes an error here so sometimes when you're using this tool particularly on an antique that doesn't have a perfectly round surface you got to use your judgment and use your eyes but in this case I think we're pretty close to where we want to be and with our center line or center point pretty well marked out I'm going to use this tool to put a little dimple there it's just a spring loaded punch I found that if you you put a like a, a scratch all or whatever here and you push it tends to run off with whatever the grain is doing so I've had pretty good luck with using this tool here Bingo. There's our center hole. And here's a shop smith set up as a horizontal boring machine. Here's a 3 8 brad point bit, and that brad point is going right into our, our pilot hole. Now how do we know that this is square to this? Because I squared it to the table and clamped it down. And then the final thing we did is throw a level on it. The other end of it is rested on the table saw with a block underneath it. We've got this set to travel two inches, so we'll have about a half an inch here and an inch and a half into there. The only uh, question I had was whether I wanted to start right off with a 3 8 bit or start with a smaller one or work my way up. Every time you change a bit, you run the risk of introducing an error. but I ran a test cut with this in a three-quarter inch dowel and it went right through with no problem. So I'm going to give this a try. We'll go nice and slow. And my only concern is right here that that doesn't blow out. I've considered wrapping this tightly with an elastic band to give it some support, but I really want to keep my eye on this as I start to drill. And if I start to see things go awry, I'll stop. But this is the only part that really worries me. So here's our bit, here's our hole, wish me luck.
We're down right about there. And there's our hole. That's perfectly round, although it doesn't look it in this shot. And our glue job held up. Everything stayed in place. Great result. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, the next step is to mark a hole in the cannonball so that we can reattach it here. This one I wanted to be very tight. And I actually I made it exactly three inch, three eighths inch. The dowel is three eighths inch. I may actually have to put the dowel on the lathe and kind of uh, take a little bit off of it because I don't want it so tight it's going to blow this apart. But this is going to go together with um, yellow carpenter's glue. When I do the hole for the cannonball, I have the ability to make that a little bit bigger. So I've got a little wiggle room to get the hole perfectly lined up when we put this back and I'll put that in with epoxy. So to mark where we want to drill the hole for the cannonball, I use a set of these. These are uh, simply just called dowel centers. And the way they work, and we'll take out the 3 8 inch dowel center, and you just put it right in the hole, and it gives you a, effectively a pin that allows you, and I'm going to use this piece of 3 quarter inch dowel to demonstrate, once you get that where you want, you just push it down, and it'll give you a mark where to drill. So it allows you to take Take the dowel, you know, use your fingers to feel where it, it needs to be, and then when you have it where you want it, you mark it. Now again, because of the nature of the way this repair works, and the fact that we can use epoxy uh, with filler in it if we're a little bit loose, it's not that absolutely critical that we get this spot on. But uh, we try to do it, uh, get it as close as we can every time, but there is a little wiggle room. This hole needed to be exactly where it was, and I'm extremely happy. You could have drilled this with a hand drill. It may not have come out as straight, but there is nothing wrong at all with using the hand drill. But I've got the Shopsmith. I've not used that horizontal boring machine on a project before, so today seemed like a good day to do that. So let's mark that ball right now. Now before I cut this off, I made a pencil mark to try to get this line back up because we wound up taking off a lot of the finish because we tried to keep the saw really really close to the ball normally that you'll have that finish line that'll help you line things up we don't have that now so and these this cannonball both of these cannonballs are nowhere near round so I think right there be where we want to be. We've got our mark. Here's the setup for the for drilling the ball. I've got this leveled with a level. I've got a 7 16 bit in there. That'll give us a 16th of an inch uh, extra. Got it marked for an inch and a half. Here we go. That's what it looks like on there. I just stuck a dowel pin in. The dowel that we're going to use is going to go deeper. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly the way I want it. And I think before I glue the ball back on, I want to take care of using some, some wax to fill these cracks and chips. And I'm just using some soft wax and a a tool that heats up. And we'll just flow a little wax into these cracks and conceal them. And we just remove any excess wax, excess, excess wax by rubbing with a, a terry cloth towel here and that takes it off every place except for where it's filled in a crack.
And I hope you can see there, that's what that crack looks like filled. And that's what it looks like with some color on it. And I just applied the color with this brush tip graining marker. And really, that's, that's nearly invisible with you staring right at it. Once that ball's on there, it's going to completely disappear. So I'm real happy with the repair. I'm real happy with the structural uh, fix we came up with. I'm going to epoxy this whole thing together because there's no sense mixing up two different batches of glue. We'll get this glued up, clamped up, leave it overnight, and we'll be done. So I've mixed up some West System epoxy. It's a marine epoxy. It's a slow-drying epoxy. I have had incredibly good results with it. It's a wonderful product. I recommend it. And again, there's, there's no absolute need to epoxy this first part together, but I'm going to do it just as a convenience. You may also notice that I ran a, uh, a saw down one side of the uh, dowel we're going to use to allow air to escape as we uh, glue this together. So for the portion that's going inside the hole that we drilled, I've applied the epoxy and we'll get some down inside the hole here. Not a lot, I don't want it bubbling out all over the place. And then you can see the bubbles coming up. That's because we, were, we put this groove there, otherwise we'd be creating a piston effect and we'd never get that down. Okay, that's down. Plenty of epoxy in there. Got any squeeze out cleaned up. Now let's go back to our epoxy mix here. We left this just as it was because there was no need to alter it. But for the uh, gluing on the larger piece, the ball, I'm going to color this epoxy with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown Blendall powder. This is a, a color product I get from Mohawk. And stir that in there. This way this is going to act like a colored fill should any of it be visible after the repair. So now we have our epoxy colored and let's thicken it up. This is also a, a, a product from West System. This comes with their uh, epoxy system if you buy it. It's called uh, 404 High Density Adhesive Filler. I'm told it's silica based and people that use this professionally take precautions uh, to prevent inhaling it and getting silicosis. So use your judgment if you're going to use this. But we're basically just thickening up the epoxy. As you know, epoxy, particularly epoxy with filler, will act like a crack filler. It will act to, uh, to fill voids, unlike regular carpenter's glue. So this is what we're going to use because as you recall, we drilled out our the cannonball one size larger to allow us to uh, have the ability to maneuver it and get it exactly where we wanted. And I'm going to make this fairly thick. And this will fill in any space around the dowel and whatever squeezes out will fill any spaces that may exist between the bottom of the cannonball and that turning where we cut it. Okay, and you can see how this is starting to thicken up. You can really dump a lot of this stuff in there and, and really make it almost like a putty if, if that's what your job requires, but I think that's going to work for us. And here's our ball. I hit it with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown dye just to color it in a little bit.
Okay, the extra clamp on it. Boss is here, we better shape up. We go around and take care of any squeeze out I find. I hope you can see how that is sitting right back on there. There's our repair up as close as you can possibly get. I'm quite happy with it so far. All right, we're going to leave this in clamps overnight. We'll pull it off tomorrow, see if it needs any touch-up. But I think we're just about done. Hey, good morning. Let's take the clamps off and see how we did. We've got a little helper here today. What's your name, honey? Charlotte. Charlotte. And how old are you? Um, Three. Three years old, that's right. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think we did a good job? Yeah. That is so clean. It's so clean. Is it nice and strong? Mm, oh. No. No, it's nice and strong. See. Uh, uh, ah, good uh, girl. Well, look, we're, uh, we're done with this project. I think it came out real well. Um, I'm very, very pleased with it, both from a uh, strength perspective and also from an appearance perspective. So I hope this video was helpful to you. So, hey, listen, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards. Thanks for watching. Take good care. And remember, it's just wood color and some shiny stuff. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wave at the camera. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> we'll see you next video. Thank you.